If we're going to address the world's greatest needs, we need new kinds of institutions that combine the rigorous and expansive thinking we most often find in academia with the social justice ethic of the nonprofit sector and the speed of execution and scale of resources that we most often find in companies. And that's why I started DeepMind. I wanted to build an organization with the capacity to keep pace with a changing world and make a real impact at scale with an ethical mission at our heart and the resources that we need to invest in the very long term. Our organization is dedicated to boosting our powers of comprehension and cognition to help solve society's most pressing challenges. That to me is the true value of distilling what has made us so effective and unique as a species, our intelligence, and trying to recreate that intelligence or at least those capacities in a digital world. Today it's also clear that technology is losing society's trust. Many technologies begin with this altruistic and arguably naive mindset at the outset. Despite the fact that five of the 10 most valuable companies in the world are actually technology companies, most of us still want to see ourselves as plucky upstarts trying to change the world for the better. But the truth is that our good intentions, initially captured by these well-meaning slogans, are now met with increasing unease by commentators and, of course, the public. I want to be clear that this is not a critique of purpose-driven businesses. In fact, I genuinely believe that these types of organizations will be key to our future. And I also want to be clear about the sincerity of the motivations of the vast majority of funders and founders and execs I've met over the years. These people do really want to make a difference and do the right thing. My experience as a co-founder of a tech company is that there is a genuine challenge here. It's not simply a matter of tech companies better informing the public about the good that they're trying to do, although that's, that's certainly needed. Rather, I think this skepticism on the part of the public must be heard as an urgent wake-up call for technology companies. It's time for us to deeply reflect on the tech industry's role and think about how we're going to put our principles into practice, not just as individuals, but as institutions formally. So I'd propose that there are three problematic asymmetries that shape how technology companies currently interact with the public. And it's these asymmetries that have contributed to the deterioration of public trust in tech and should now form areas of urgent action for us all. There is an asymmetry between people who develop technologies and the communities who use their products. If you look at Silicon Valley, salaries are twice the median wage for the rest of the US. What's more, the technology industry's employee base is unrepresentative of broader society when it comes to gender, to race, and very importantly, class, for reasons that include cultural bias, the cost of living, and discriminatory hiring and management processes. A first-of-its-kind study released by the Kapoor Center earlier this year on why people leave technology reports that 40% said unfairness played a major role in them leaving, and 78% of employees' surveys said that they had, at some point, been treated unfairly in their careers. This included being passed over for promotion, stereotyping as well as bullying, humiliation, and sexual harassment. Now, the recent spotlight on these issues has meant that more people are woke to the need for workplace culture to be addressed, but these underlying inequalities also make their way into the companies in other more insidious ways. Groups representing more diverse communities, and often the public interest, usually don't have a seat at the table when it comes to making the important decisions that influence the direction of product development in the big tech companies. As a result, employees at tech companies are largely detached from the day-to-day -day realities of the people they are meant to serve, meaning that unintended harms and biases can often come built into the products we ship. Second, there is an asymmetry of information regarding how technology works and shapes society. As the recent congressional hearings on the Russian interference in the US election show, even people in the highest strata of government have little understanding of the novel ways in which technology is being used to shape our world it's pretty clear that we as a society are only just beginning to realize how much these digital systems deeply influence our daily lives. Even if companies provided their code publicly, our civil society and regulatory institutions often lack the technical expertise that's needed to verify the claims that are made by the industry about their own algorithms and systems. It's a genuinely hard problem to attempt to close the gaps between what companies are already building how to anticipate and, of course, direct the potential future effects 
on society, and then how to engage and, of course, explain all of that to the public. Thirdly, there is an asymmetry of motivation between market-based incentives and the societal goals that we all, of course, aspire to. Money and growth cannot be the only arbiters of success, and we can no longer assume that relentlessly driving for efficiency will necessarily generate sufficient societal benefit to justify that modus operandi. The standard metrics we use to measure progress and achievement, investment round valuations, number of active users per month, revenues, only reflect the fiduciary duties of companies. They can often pay insufficient regard to the societal responsibility that comes with changing the world. And since board seats are, of course, occupied by investors and competition is the name of the game, companies can slowly inch towards questionable practices to aggressively drive up user acquisition, sometimes without sufficient regard to the longer-term societal consequences of those actions. And now I think good intentions are no longer good enough. We have to do much more to regain the public's trust. We must take responsibility for the ethical implications of our work, anticipating the challenges at the start of a project's life cycle instead of grappling with them midway through or worse, after the fact. And we need to confront those asymmetries head on, not hope that they will go away. They won't. Tech's impact is clearly enormous. The effect it has on people's lives demands that we do much better.